Thanks so much for joining us on this busy Sunday morning. G7 leaders are set to speak today following the first direct attack from Iran on Israel and amid fears of further escalation in the region. The Israeli military says it intercepted nearly all drones and missiles overnight with help from the U.S., the U.K., and Jordan. The IDF says more than 300 drones, cruise missiles, and ballistic missiles were fired from Iran. Retaliation, Iran says, for the recent killing of top Iranian Revolutionary Guard commanders in Syria. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has convened his war cabinet and says he will decide on how to respond. Iran is warning that its response will be larger if Israel retaliates. So let's bring in Israel's ambassador to Canada, Ido Moed. Nice to see you, Ambassador. Good morning. Thank you for having me. What's the latest you can tell us about the attacks that took place overnight? N nothing got into Israel at all. Was there any damage at all? There was some damage, some minor damage that was inflicted on some places in Israel, including one airbase in the southern part of the country, but no, ma no major damage. Uh, we have to remember this is the the, the most the, the biggest attack airborne attack by a country against any other country in the world and as you are showing right now and pointing out this is an attack of an islamic state on the third holiest place for islam which was protected by the jewish state's uh, iron dome uh, defense system we will not allow these places to be attacked we will not allow any part of israel to be attacked because our fa we face this monster called Iran, and we know that we have to keep the peace and stability in the region against their ongoing efforts, either through pro proxies, through Hamas on the 7th of October, mm -hmm. uh, Syria, uh, Iraq, uh, uh, we've seen it also, in, of course, in Lebanon, Hezbollah, Yemen, all around us, they are yeah. trying to inflict damage on Israel and actually to destabilize the Middle East, and actually it's an attack on the, on the global world, on the global scene. Well, you talked about the, the, the different groups, the proxies that Iran has used in the past on, on Israel. But this, as you point out, the first direct attempt uh, from Iran, or Iranian territory itself. Is that um, troubling for Israel, that this uh, has, has perhaps changed the nature of what could happen in the future? The scope of this attack has changed something that is not just for us, but I think also for the entire world. We see and we, something that we've warned against throughout this uh, uh, war we are waging against one of its proxies, against Hamas. We've seen now what Iran is and what Iran is willing to do in order for them to achieve their goal, and that is to eliminate the state of Israel and actually to destabilize the whole world. Mm. They're extremely dangerous. And so this attack actually constitutes a wake up call for the global scene, for the international community to understand that Iran's need to be faced strongly right now. Uh, first and foremost, the first initial step would be to um, designate the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist organization that needs to happen now. It has to happen today. Uh, we have to face Iran's nuclear capabilities. They are extremely dangerous. And this is really a wake up call for all of us. We have to act. And, and you're saying that about the IRGC because Canada has yet to designate that group as a terrorist right. organization, correct? That's right. That's yeah. Right. And would you expect to see movement on that given what has happened over the past 24 hours then? Of course. Well, yeah. what else do we need to see? We see that Iran is, is using all its power against Israel, but also against it. The, the, the region. It's not just Israel that responded. We responded together with our allies in the region and beyond because we all understand that the face that the, the threat that we are facing right now from Iran is huge and it needs to be addressed as forcefully as possible immediately. OK, so let's talk about what the Israeli response could be, um, because the War Cabinet, I, I believe, has met at any rate. And uh, Benny Gantz, one of the ministers in, in the War Cabinet, did say that Israel will respond in a time and place of its choosing. Uh, does that mean that, that nothing will happen immediately, that, that, that everyone will take a moment just to sort of consider the ramifications here? As we are speaking, uh, Iran's proxies continue to attack Israel, be it Hezbollah in the north, be it Hamas in the south. So the attacks are ongoing. There is no time to pause. And so when the decision will be made, we will react. And 
uh, I think it's very, very important also to, nate, to note at this special moment that uh, when we are talking about how the international community views this conflict and views Iran's actions, uh, they reacted a very strong reaction from the Canadian government, uh, from Prime Minister Trudeau, from Foreign Minister Jolie, also from the opposition, uh, yes. Pierre Polyev, is extremely important at this point in time, but it's also the time to add acts to words. This is the time to act, to act against Iran. Okay, so, so, but to, uh, just to try, and, and perhaps you don't know the answer to this yet, Ambassador, but are we talking about an overt military strike or are we talking about something more covert in this instance? I wouldn't go into detail on that. This is being discussed right. and, uh, and, of course, uh, we'll know when it happens. But, but I, is it fair to say that Israel does not want an escalation of this either, that, that you don't want to be uh, at war with Iran, or, or is that not fair to say? What's important to note that when Israel is hit, Israel will hit back. This is what we've said from the outset. Sure. We have to ensure that our adversaries, our enemies, will not continue to attack us. Israel is a peaceful country. We have not started this war. We have no interest in escalating this war. We want to live our lives in peace with our neighbors. The Abraham Accords that still hold during this war are there because we, with some of our neighbors, believe that that is the right way to pursue our steps. But if we are attacked, if we are hit, such as last night, we have to respond because we have to make sure that our adversaries sometimes have to understand that the language of, right. of, course, of force makes the difference, and this is something that is considered at the moment. The, the fact that the United States, though, has said, yes, its support of Israel is ironclad, but it will not participate in an offensive strike against Iran, d surely that has some impact on decisions that are made going forward as well. I would like to go into speculations at the moment, but I think the United States' strong and ironclad support was very clear last night. And that was clear to us, and that was very clear to our enemies. Tell me, Ambassador, what do you think this means for conversations around a ceasefire, uh, for release of hostages, for uh, protecting civilians and humanitarian aid in Gaza? What, what does that change on that front? I think that what it changes right now is that we have to uh, set our priorities right. The hostages need to be released immediately. Hamas have to lay down their weapons immediately. Uh, we need to be able to defend ourselves with all the means that we can, that, that are required for our defense. And uh, these decisions need to be made right now. I mean that when we are talking about the South and we are talking about the Northern Front, Hezbollah is already, been, has already uh, shot missiles across the border. We don't want to escalate that front either. But we have to remember that Hezbollah is a proxy of Iran and they are very able and capable of inflicting harm on Israel. So we have to be prepared for that. It, it doesn't sound to me, though, Ambassador, just from hearing you speak, as though Israel wants this to end in some sort of diplomatic or political solution, whether we're talking about what's happening in Gaza or whether we're talking about Iran. We wish it would. We wish the diplomacy would be the solution. We are still hoping that in the North, Resolution 1701, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1701, will be fully implemented and Hezbollah will withdraw and will leave the border area. Uh, we don't have much hope in that, but we still believe that that should be the solution. We are looking for that. Again, Israel didn't start this war, but the massacre of October the 7th, the killing of 1,200 Israelis, the abduction of hundreds of them, of which 133 are still being held in tunnels in unknown conditions. We don't know how many of them are still alive. This is ongoing. Yes. We are not in a sort of a lull. We are still in the midst of a war. Can, can I ask Ambassador Moed, just as a final question, when we could expect a decision from Prime Minister Netanyahu on what the response will be? Are we talking days or hours? I wouldn't like to speculate on that. I think that uh, we are, as this war unfolds, uh, we will have to respond. We will have to make sure that our security, the security of the people of Israel, is uh, reestablished again quickly. Uh, this is the main goal of the government, uh, to make uh, Israel safe and secure and to make sure that we can proceed with our lives as quickly as possible and regain the momentum of peace that we've had until Iran destabilized and disrupted this with their horrific attack through their proxy in the south, uh, Hamas, 
be it with Hezbollah or directly from Iranian territory. This needs to end. Ambassador Moet, thank you for coming in this morning. Appreciate it very much, sir. Thank you for having me. In Iran, demonstrators took to the streets earlier this morning to show their support for the country's unprecedented missile strike on Israel. <laughs> Hundreds gathered in Tehran's Palestine Square, waving Iranian and Palestinian national flags. Earlier today, Iran's foreign minister said his country had no intention of continuing its military operation and called the attacks self-defense. Earlier this morning, I spoke with retired U.S. Colonel Peter Mansour, former executive officer to U.S. General David Petraeus in Iraq, about how this might change what is unfolding in the Middle East. Retired Colonel Peter Mansour, thank you so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure. When we last spoke, uh, you actually told me you thought it would be a miscalculation for Iran to enter this conflict. First of all, do you see this as uh, Iran entering the conflict? And how significant is this direct attack? Well, this Iranian attack is in retaliation for an Israeli attack on yeah. a couple of their personnel in uh in syria and so i don't necessarily see this as iran entering the conflict mm -hmm. unless israel retaliates again on Ar iranian territory i think this is uh iran sending a message that attacks on its personnel won't be tolerated and there will be consequences but i don't think they intend for this to be the start of a new war so if it was uh, a retaliation or a show of force, uh, do you think they achieved that objective? Well, we have to take them at their war word. They say they achieved their objective, yeah. although only three uh, drones and missiles actually hit anything. Yeah. But I think they're satisfied with the results. And as long as Israel doesn't retaliate again, uh, then I think this is the end of it. So let, let's talk about that then, the likelihood that Israel might retaliate. Obviously, there's a, a lot of uh, conversations happening between Washington and Israel right now. What do you think is the likelihood? What And what would that look like if they decided to do something? Well, I think Israel has more wars than it really needs at present, and uh, it would be wise for it not to re retaliate. The United States is undoubtedly asking it not to, asking Israel not to retaliate because the next step will be for Ara Iran to attack not just Israeli targets in the region, but U.S. targets as well. Mm -hmm. So this back and forth is going on, no doubt, between Tel Aviv and or Jerusalem and, and Washington, and those discussions are, are playing out. The fact that uh, Biden ha has told, reportedly told uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, y you took, you've got to win here, just walk away from it. Uh, and said that the U.S. will not support um, a, a war with Iran. Will Would that have an impact, do you think, on the strategic decisions going forward? Or is Prime Minister Netanyahu perhaps more concerned about what's happening domestically? Well, I think absolutely the uh, feeling in Washington uh, will have an impact on yeah. what's happening in uh, in Israel. You know, they, the Israelis have gotten a win with this. They killed two top-level IRGC Quds Force commanders. Um, the retaliation slightly damaged the military base, although regrettably it uh, badly injured a, a young girl. But it was not really um, a, a hurtful retaliation to Israel in so many ways. And so if Israel wants a war with Iran, it's going to find itself alone in that conflict. And I don't think that would be wise strategically, politically, or diplomatically. Would there be a reason for Israel to to, to, to do that, though? I mean, it, obviously, there, there's been a shadow war for, for many decades, and the sort of proxy forces around Israel have caused an enormous amount of uh, pain and conflict for Israel. So the, the reason uh, for Israel to retaliate, if you want to make that case, is that yeah. this attack, if, that this attack actually originated from Iranian soil, and that Israel therefore needs to establish dominance over Iran and prove to it that it can't uh, to attack is Israeli territory with impunity from its own territory. So that would be the, the, um, the argument for uh, retaliating. Yeah, and I'm not suggesting it should. I'm just trying to get a sense, obviously, of what that could look like. And I do know that there's also been some, some conversations around other kinds of uh, uh, response, uh, maybe not militarily. 
do you have any sense about what that could mean? Maybe a cyber attack, that kind of thing. Yeah, it would be much make much more sense for Israel to use its covert assets in the region to attack Iranian targets. Uh, a uh, cyber attack is not out of the question. Uh, but I really think the next step here is is diplomatic. The G7 is meeting, and um, if you put uh, Iran under diplomatic pressure, I think that would be the the next step that would uh, be the wise strategic move. Just for people who don't necessarily follow the region as closely a, a, as you do, how how significant is this? Is this a, a game changer in terms of where we are, or could it be one? I guess. Well, it is unique in that this is the first attack um, that on Israel that has come from Iranian territory. It shows that Iran is uh, is serious about this conflict and the axis of resistance against Israel. Um, the other thing, in a military sense, is this sort of attack mirrors what's happening in uh, in Ukraine: Russian attacks with missiles and drones in in combination. And so we see the uh, the fallout from the Ukrainian war here in the Middle East. Well, I was going to actually ask you about that, and I'll end here. There are a lot of people asking questions about why Ukraine is not equipped the way Israel is and why it does not get assistance from allies the way Israel did to protect itself from a drone strikes. What do you make of that? Well, uh, Ukraine has a, a lot of air defense systems that the West has provided. Yes. Uh, the, the problem now, clearly and simply, is that the U.S. Congress has not authorized further aid. And uh, hopefully this month it will uh, take that up and actually um, hold a vote. Okay. Colonel Mansour, thank you so much for your expertise on this. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you.